You know, these days, there's a lot of things we don't agree on, but I'm pretty sure there's one thing we all agree on. We'd rather be home because there is no place like home. But sometimes we need to find resources to help us stay at home so we can age in place. What are those resources you're probably wondering? Well, we're going to tell you today, so stay tuned. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. Yeah, today's the day we're going to share some great resources for you because we are always talking about aging in place, and sometimes we need a little bit of help to do that. So my guest today is um, Vicki Hurley Schubert. Hope I said that right, Vicki. She is from Assisting Hands Home Care. So welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to share information. Well, really, my pleasure. And I know you've got some good stuff to share with everyone. But first, just tell us a little bit about Assisting Hands and what is your role there? Assisting Hands is a full service um, home care agency. We provide non-medical services to folks wherever they call home, whether it's a private home, independent living, assisted living, or memory care, everything from respite to 24-hour live-in care. Everywhere in Mammoth and Ocean. Home takes on uh, many meanings for many people. It's not just someone who lives in a house. So that's an important concept. I'm glad you said that. So let's first, you know, give a, a kind of an overview, Vicki, if you would. When we talk about home care, because again, our, our goal here is, of course, we, we all want to stay home, live in our homes as long as we possibly can. And Obviously, sometimes we need a little bit of extra help. So when people, for people listening who don't really understand the concept of home care, maybe just a little overview of what do we mean by that? Home care is a broad umbrella. Um, it covers things such as what we do, the non-medical skills that say, here's Everything you take for granted. I always describe what we do as everything you and I as able take for granted every day with um, as taking that morning or evening shower, all of our personal hygiene, brushing your teeth, um, you know, putting on deodorant, getting dressed, putting your socks, shoes, shirt, everything on, even just the simple act of getting out of bed safely, right. safely, you know, exactly, exactly. Because if you're impaired in any way, and when I say impaired, that could be, you've had a long illness, you know, illness is in the pr forefront now with post COVID recovery, um, pneumonias, things like that, that really take a toll on the body, or you've had a surgical procedure and it's a little difficult to move around. And you try and get up. And I always say, I had surgery recently. And those first couple of getting up were tough. It was a chore to just even think about how to swing your legs over and get up. You know, particularly after surgery, you've had a, a ton of familiar, unfamiliar drugs, anesthesia. So we want to keep everybody safe in their home. Even that Midnight trip to the bathroom can be treacherous sometimes. Yes. You know, so you're, you're half awake or if you're impaired with, you know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, anything like that, it's, it's treacherous in the middle of the night. So we help with all of those things. Now, there are other facets of care in the home. There's the skilled nursing, which, you know, we get a lot of calls going, I need a nurse. Um, so there's a difference between the levels of care. Right. So we have home health aides. And then there's the skilled nursing. So those are medically inclined folks. Think wound care. You're visiting nurse after a hospital stay or a stay in rehab. That's what skilled care is. They take care of wounds, ostomies, trachs, all of those things. The complicated stuff where there's wound uh, dressing changes or something to do medically inclined. That's above and beyond your everyday activities, your activities of daily living. Right. And that, that all makes perfect sense. Yeah. You'd yeah, want there's, to specialize to take care of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's also other folks under the home umbrella, such as hospice. Now, hospice, not a death sentence. It's a connection to Mm -hmm. resources. I know we're going to be talking about how to connect people to resources and Hospice is a wonderful service. We work hands in hand with our hospice partners and support the work they do. Um, Hospice is for anybody who has a terminal diagnosis and an expectancy of six months or less to live. But we have clients who've been on hospice a couple years because they go on hospice, thrive and have an upswing with the extra services and attention that hospice brings, such as That's the nurse amazing. coming regularly. Yeah. 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 I've heard and you can go on and off hospice as many times as you need to. There's no limit. And, you know, when I hear people, you know, with these diagnoses, cancer, um, later stage Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, COPD, CHF, I always suggest, have you had a hospice consult? because it opens the door to so many things, such as um, the chaplain services. And when I say chaplain, I don't mean, you know, it's counseling, whether it's psychological, spiritual, whatever you need, they will support you. Plus the additional aid service, because with hospice, you get an aid that comes into the home to supplement a private service such as ours. And then you can get links to equipment. So say you need that hospital bed, incontinence supplies, food thickeners, all of that becomes covered under hospice and you don't have to pay out of pocket anymore. And people don't understand that. And they're like, wow, because a lot of those things are not covered by insurance. But once you go on hospice, which is covered by Medicare, a hundred percent. Different situation. It opens the doors. I think there's a lot of people that when you say hospice, they think, well, I have to be in the hospital, but clearly not. You can uh, have access to all of that in your own home, which again, you're you're still home. There's no, you can engage, you can engage hospice in the hospital. Say you get a diagnosis, you can engage it. And then hospice can arrange for you to come home. Whatever your wish is, Mm -hmm. hospice can make that happen. And there are fantastic, fantastic resources. Some of the best people I know in the healthcare industry are the hospice folks. They are truly angels on earth. I have so much respect for what they do. That's the, I, I feel like that's the height of compassion to, to be in a, hosp- a hospice worker. Hospice and, you know, believe it or not, a home health aid. Because I learned it from firsthand experience. My journey into this industry was my mom had home in-home care 24 hours a day the last three and a half years of her life. And let me tell you that care, those caregivers that cared for her were doing a job I was not built for. And the compassion and love they showed to my mom was incredible. And it made her last years more comfortable and safe. And, you know, I could spend quality time with her as opposed to being her caregiver. And and that's a gift that home care, you know, whatever you need gives you is it protects that relationship of parent and child. And it gives the parents the gift of dignity. You know, you know bring up a, a really good point here is that not, listen, I'm probably like you. I, I, I don't think I'm built for that either. And not everyone is that able to take care for someone at home. And the point of it is that not to worry because there's these marvelous resources in the community and that's exactly what they're there for. Exactly. So that so that allowed you to just have you and your mom be together and took all the burden of that, of the other part of it off your shoulders. Exactly. And also there's the professional side. As we were talking before about someone post-op or who has Parkinson's, what have you. The caregivers from a professional agency are professionally trained because there is a way to move people and assist them. What the caregiver does and the way they do it is differently than 
a family member because they right. can there's the correct train. way and then there's the other way. Yeah, yeah. You could exactly definitely, you could definitely as a family member, if you if you don't know how to do this properly, you could hurt yourself and the person you're caring from. So exactly, exactly. Not, not always the best idea. But Vicki, what about people who, you know, maybe maybe they're home after surgery or whatever their reason, but again, you're home and you, you there's some housekeeping that might need to be done or who's going to make breakfast for you, that kind of a thing. So how does that work out with uh, the home care situation? The home health aid can do all of those kind of things. So again, the things we take for granted, getting up in the morning, making, making that cup coffee. of coffee, yeah. uh, eggs and toast. The caregiver can cook meals. I always tell people they're not CIA trained chefs. You're not going to get Chateau Rayon, but you, you'll you get, you know, they'll cook you the basics, you know, chicken, you know, ham, eggs, salads, you know, mm-hmm. anything that's usual and customary, you know, they, they can help you with, um, and they do the, we call it the light housekeeping. Now the difference is they're not the cleaning lady. They're not going to get down on their hands and knees. And they're not the going to do your windows. Don't exactly. Yeah. They're not doing the baseboards. If they help you shower, they're going to wipe down the tub, clean up the bathroom. After you do all that grooming, you know, the simple act brushing your teeth for someone with, um, you know, cognitive ability, you know, holding that brush and going is difficult. The caregiver can help with that. They'll clean up the sink. They'll clean up the counter. If there's an accident, if someone's incontinent, they'll clean that up, but they're not going to be doing the baseboards. They're going to do, uh, we call, I call, I coin it basic home sanitization. Okay. They'll wipe things yeah. down, run the vacuum cleaner, you know, run the Swiffer, change the bed linens, which is, you know, huge. Um, do your laundry thing, all things like that. But, you know, for well, the heavy all duty like that, that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. Oh, when you're not oh, exactly okay, having someone. We've gotten calls. Friends, yeah, that's that's a big deal. We've gotten calls. You know, grandma fell down the basement steps trying to do the laundry or uh, another one. We had a case where um, an elderly person was going out to take the garbage out. How, how simple is that? You take the can and bring it to the curb. We take it for Seems granted. very simple on the surface. But if you're trying to juggle a cane, a walker, a right. rollator, or your balance is off in any way, taking that garbage can to the curb is treacherous. We had someone mm. take a fall at the curb, broke their hip, and they, they were there for an hour until someone saw them because they had no way to call for help. And a caregiver can do all of that for you. So the point is that they're making your life comfortable enough and easy enough so that you can stay home and maybe you, maybe you're recovering or maybe, you know, so do people have home health care for typically like X amount of time per week? I guess it varies based on your needs. Yes. The each, we call them cases, each case, each person is different. For their needs and acuity, you know, we have everything from four hours a day, several times a week, all the way to someone who has a 24 hour live in where a caregiver lives in the home with them, because that's what they need. Um, We see a lot of overnight cases too, where someone needs someone who's awake in the home overnight because someone tries to get up and go to the restroom and they're not steady and they've had falls. So there's all kinds of different home care service that can be provided. You know, Every- what would you say to someone who who would say, well, you know, why do I really have to, uh, you know, pay a home health care person? Why don't I just have my niece or a family friend look after my family member or look after me? There's a big difference. Yeah, we, ex- there is. There is. And it really honestly depends on the acuity and person. If it's so many people are caregivers and they don't realize it. If you're looking after, if you're looking after a loved one and you're helping with things like setting up their pillbox, doing grocery store runs, taking them to a doctor, picking up prescriptions, that's all part of caregiving. You're a caregiver and you might not even know that that you might not know it. 
But when it comes to the nitty gritty stuff, the personal care, the grooming, the post-op, you know, having a professional on hand is always a great option because it it's a professional. They've been professionally trained how to do it, what to look for, how to move you. And it protects that relationship, that, that dignity, you know, is it, would mom want you giving her a shower? Yes. Mm -hmm. She bathed you when you were a baby and she saw your naked tushy. Do you want to see mom's naked tushy? And does she want you to do that for her? You know, you, you do want to preserve the dignity of everyone. Yeah. And the society has changed where we used to be a caregiving society and you had the multi-generational home where the children were expected to take care of the the elders. You know, I look at myself as an example. My my mom, I grew up in a multi-generational household. My mom took care of her parents as they declined in health, both of them and her husband. But when she, after my dad passed, she looked at me and The day after he died, we were in the attorney's office and she was buying long-term care because she was smart enough to know things had changed in a generation. It was no longer, uh, you know, the stay-at-home parent model is less common than it was. She knew my husband and I both needed to work to support our household and our mortgage. So she was like, I don't want you to have to choose between- a job and paying the mortgage and caring for me when the time comes. And if you look at today's families, most of them are two income. Children are scattered all over the country, if not the globe for for work. And people aren't living in these nuclear communities anymore. They're spread. More and more people are hiring caregivers for the role. We get calls. I live in Ohio. I live in Florida. I live in California. Mom is still in New Jersey. How can we help her? And, you know, hiring someone, uh, we call it the black market. Um, Hiring someone, you know, a family friend or someone you know through someone else opens you up for all kinds of liabilities that people don't realize. So, you know, what you're going to pay through an agency is probably a little bit more um, then hiring someone on your own, although I have seen, and it frightens me to death as a caregiver, signs on the side of the road, caregiver, $25 an hour cash in home for a family, desperate for a caregiver. And I'm looking at that sign going, oh my God, how do you know who you're hiring? Because when you hire through an agency, there are strict rules in place. Um, the way we conduct business we hire all certified home health aides. So what that means is they have been trained, have a level education and competency and certified by the board of nursing through the division of community affairs for their skill set and training. Their background checked by the board of nursing, which is yeah, that's huge, criminal thing. background check. Yeah. And then when our office hires them, their background checked again. So you have double background check to ensure you have someone who's on the up coming into your home. We also bond and store all of our caregivers. So what does that mean? That means you've all heard the horror story. So and so the earrings went missing, the silverware started to right. decline. Common you story, have by the way. Yeah. Exactly. So hiring through an agency, you have the bonding and insurance. And everyone in our office bonded and insured from the owner to every single caregiver, because you never know what's going to to happen. Well, Um, I feel like people are doing this so-called black market. They think they're saving money, but in the end um, you're letting a stranger in your house who's not been vetted and that opens you up to all sorts of liabilities. So it's, I think it's, I feel like it is really worth the money to use an agency that's been in business a while and, and is vetting people coming into your home. A hundred percent. Your loved and, ones, by the way. Yeah. And the other thing people don't realize when you hire a person on the black market, you become the employer. So you're responsible yes. for paying their taxes and yes. their payroll deductions. And an agency pays a small fortune for workers comp. So if that caregiver gets hurt lifting or moving you, we as the with the workers comp pay for their care. 
if they get hurt privately, they could go after the homeowner and the person that hired them because you become the employer. Theory, it really is. It yeah, is and there's Medicare, um, there's Medicaid penalties too. If you're doing a spend down to get someone on Medicaid and if you're paying privately, you're going to get penalized because you can't track where that income, where that money went and was spent with. Whereas if you use an agency, you can pull out your receipts and go, I paid an agency and it's a legit expense. Otherwise you're stuck paying, you know, penalties. So I just want to remind so, and everyone, plus, sorry, I just want to remind everyone that Vicky's uh, contact info will be in the comments if you want to reach out to her. I mean, obviously there's so much more to talk about. We only have so much time, but Vicky, I definitely want you to mention something about veterans because there's always a special, a, a special need and a special opportunity, I'm going to call it, if you're a veteran. So please just share Absolutely. That. Um, we love our veterans. Um, they have served our country and all of us, and it is our pleasure and privilege to serve them. Um, we get a lot of veterans that call because uh, it's on our screening um, intake. And veterans are eligible for two programs to help them fund care, so to pay for care services. One is for every single veteran who's eligible to get services at the VA. It's called community care. And it is a program that provides seven to 14 hours of home care services to veterans for free. Um, they just have to go to the VA clinic closest to them and get the prescription and authorization. And then the VA sends it out to a VA approved provider like Assisting Hands. And we call the veteran, set up service, send the home health aid. We bill the VA, the VA pays us and the veteran never sees a bill which is phenomenal. Um, I get many veterans calling me, oh, I don't need that. Save it to someone who does. And I'm like, but sir, you're calling me. You need it. <laughs> You've earned it, please. Um, and the other is aid and attendance, which is a wartime pension for wartime veterans. There is an application process for it. Um, so there are resources in the community that we can connect you with for assistance in applying for that, but it's for veterans 65 and older. Um, so we're seeing some World War II, Korea and Vietnam veterans applying for this program. It just requires one day of service during wartime plus 90 days of continuous service. And there are some income requirements, but once you apply, it's yours for the rest of your life to use, to spend on services, whether it's home care, assisted living, whatever you need. And the fabulous part about aid and attendance, surviving spouses and widows are eligible to apply. Excellent. Excellent. So you see out there, there are so many ways that are available to you to keep you at home. There's no place like home. That's where you want to be. Sometimes we just need a little bit of help. And so we're exactly. talking to Vicki Hurley Schubert from Assisting Assisting Hands Home Care. And I think, you know, Vicki, I think you've shared a lot of great information. And again, for anyone who wants to reach out to Vicki to find out more, what you might be eligible for, her contact info is um, on the screen and in the description. So I'd say feel free to call her. She's a great resource of all kinds of ways to stay home, age in place. Exactly. That's what you want to do. I can, I can connect you to anything you need from a visiting physician, home modifications, physical therapy, meal services. We have the resources and that's part of my role at the company is to work with our families so they can stay home as long as possible and give them the tools to do that. Well, thank you so much, Vicki. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for having me, Andrea. It was a pleasure. So remember out there, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr, and we'll see you next time on Scan FYI. Bye, everyone. Bye, Vicki.